Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. And I'm Jordan. And and today and today we're joined by people are gonna hate this. A very, yeah, we're like a, we're in our Pacific Rim drift compatible. Uh, today we're joined by a very special guest. You know her as MXM Tune, or perhaps you know her by her human name, Maya. That was really good. And you yeah. stopped yourself from saying mom tune. So mm. I, I can see the gears every, turning in your yeah, head. I, everything in my brain, the monkeys in my brain were trying <laughs> to push me to mom tune. And at a certain point, it's kind of like a dialect, right? Like, sure, mm-hmm. there's this way to say a word. But when a thousand years goes by and we've all accepted the new term. That's a thing. I more can't. More people say mom tune, your mom tune. I'm sorry. It is what it is. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. That's, That's like okay. Pokemon. Yeah, she like well, it's because like even of Pokemon Re- Rihanna. because her name's Iman. Oh yeah, yeah. Or Rihanna, yeah. There's oh. a bunch of people that like Ari. I think even Ariana Grande is not correct. Is she Ariana Grande? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty yeah. much something yeah. along those lines. It's but, Susanna yeah. Grande. Yeah, <laughs> Rihanna or yeah, everyone says Rihanna because it sounds so. Ooh. Mm, but it's Rihanna. Yeah, because whenever she Rihanna. says it, it's Rihanna, and you're yeah. like, why are you saying your own name wrong? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Um, so get, get back to music. <laughs> You're ruining <laughs> your name. Uh, speaking of music, that's you. you do speaking of music, music. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. that is what I do. It's Go not ahead. what I ever anticipated to be doing, but I've been doing it for almost seven years now. So it's did been you a like minute. trip over like a ukulele or something? I literally did. I like fell into a pit, and they were like, <laughs> "You are gonna make music." <laughs> I, you started I was, doing lyrics about hurting yeah, your knee. Exactly. Like, yeah, my knee. Oh my gosh, that's pretty much how it happened. That's what my Wikipedia page says about me. So <laughs> it's very short. Yeah, it's very short. It's like two sentences long. It she fell into a pole. Uh, in a hole. Um, Mom tune tumbled into. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna, we're gonna make mom tune a thing and we can't make it a thing it's okay it's already a thing oh, okay. it's fine it's already I, uh, the pinned comment yeah <laughs> Kimball you guys got mom tune I, I can see it now it's gonna happen inevitable but yeah no that's that's what I do what did you anticipate doing before I was actually gonna so I graduated I am um, in high school in 2018 I'm a, a youngin but I almost <laughs> did same fuck yeah yeah us too <laughs> Oh, 2018, I fucking, what was I even doing? Right, I was, I was like, basically in diapers. At yeah, that point. I can't even, I don't have memories to go <laughs> yeah. back that far because I'm so young. I mean, I was 24, but I was in diapers. Because <laughs> 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 I am so old. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I, um, I applied for college to do architecture and then Ooh. took a complete left turn when music started going off for me online. And, and that started as like a little hobby thing. It was a little hobby thing because, like many other kids, I was like, I could be a YouTuber. And then I started a channel, and then magically, that was not what picked up for me. Music was the thing that was just kind of like the side thing. But um, after that point, I fell into the hole and got sucked into yeah, the music then I industry. Got into the hole. Yep. What, had you always been into like just hobbyist music production? Or? It was kind of just like I, I don't know. I. I think I, I looked at songwriting and I was like, oh, I could do that. I could go on rhymezone.com oh, and you're gonna, throw you're together gonna something. Oh, you're going to make some, some budding musicians be like, wait. I can? Wait, <laughs> no, you're going to make all these people who think they can do what we do validated. How dare I do that? Yeah, you're, uh, you're democratizing <laughs> music. Yeah. You're making it for the people and not for the Rian- the Rihannas up here. <laughs> and you are of uh, the, the opinion that like it is only... a a, a meritocracy and anybody that doesn't make it is because their music is bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they taught me in the pit. Uh-huh. Huh? That's exactly it. I, uh, yeah, no, I just, um, I don't know what drew me to it. I think it was kind of just, I felt like I grew up in a household where mental health was not necessarily talked about. And I think that that music was kind of like the outlet to, to discuss anything that I was feeling. And then the internet was also like the one area of my life where I felt like it was like completely my own. I think that's the case for a lot of people too. Yeah. So I just really was like drawn to it as a space for like creative expression. And um, I don't know, I was like shouting into a void and then suddenly someone shouted back and I was like, huh? Yeah. (laughs) What are you doing in here? Yeah, literally, where where did you come from? I'm supposed to be alone. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Hey, stop listening. (laughs) That's a, there's a few YouTubers back in the, the old days who just uploaded videos 
to share them with other people because it, mm-hmm. was, it was the easiest way to like get a video to someone <laughs> yeah. like in 2007 and yeah, then like they popped off from that <laughs> and I think that that's really funny to like truly by accident like they didn't even know YouTube was a public yeah. website they're like no what's <laughs> happening why is everybody watching this it's kind of violated get out get stop watching my video oh my gosh I love that I think that's more fun that way yeah. I don't know w- did you I'm, I'm just curious if like mm-hmm. If it was your outlet for expressing things that maybe you didn't feel like there was a a conduit for elsewhere and you didn't have people or a community at the time that you were comfortable doing that. Yeah. Once people start listening to that, do you kind of end up there again where you're like, well, now I want my lyrics to be a little less uh, because there's someone in the void. Totally. I mean, I think. What do you say? (sighs) Just like yelling back. (laughs) I can hear you. That was definitely a situation. I mean, I remember. Actually, like my Twitter account currently is the second time that I've made a Twitter account because I got to like 10,000 followers initially in my first one. I was like, shut it down, shut it down. There's too many people perceiving me. Like I freaked out over the fact that there were so many people that were paying attention to what I was saying. And then I think in the same vein, when you're making something that is like really emotionally vulnerable, there there's like the fear factor definitely comes into it. But I think Joe Rogan gets in there. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, for sure. He's like clearly fear is a factor for you. He's in the void. (laughs) Like, I like your music. We should date Ivermectin together. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to eat this goat ball? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really oh good God. for, uh, so the, you know, the Jews taking over Hollywood. And you're like, whoa, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down. Jamie, look that up. I'm wrong? <laughs> well, no, you're wrong, actually. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, uh, so you were saying, sorry. That, <laughs> no, you're so uh, fine. But. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you're so fine. <laughs> the, wow. like music being an outlet and being Mm -hmm. able to like express yourself and express your emotions. That's Mm -hmm. such a real thing, I think for so many people and to be able to have like a outlet. I listen to a lot of music where, you know, the sound, the sounds are happy, but then you listen to the lyrics because a lot of people don't pay attention to the lyrics. Yeah. And then you read the lyrics and you're like, Oh, Oh, (laughs) this is, are you good? Yeah. 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 It's like Morse code. (laughs) Oh, okay. Uh. Closing it's, genius. It's so funny because if you say if you say it, but like with Melodyne, <laughs> or like you say it with Auto Tune, then suddenly it's not sad. It is um, crazy. I feel like we're having such a. My parents left me when I was young, and it's like this is a ball on. That's kind of good. It's kind of a bop. Looking though. at the genius lyrics, like what? What does that mean? Why is everyone cheering? It's like that boys <laughs> meme <laughs> of us. <laughs> Why are people cheering about this podcast? <laughs> well, I haven't seen the boys. I just know there's that character who drinks breast milk. That's the same one as that does that face. Exactly. I think. That's yeah. how I know who yeah. he is because uh, my me. history with breast milk. With breast milk. Yeah. yeah. Well, my history with breast milk. <laughs> a uh, Jarvis Johnson story. Dra- yeah. Just because. Uh, do you know about this lore? We, oh, we can talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, it's best not to. <sighs> it's I had I I didn't do anything. <laughs> that's all you need to know. Um, I feel like I'm filling in a bunch of gaps in my brain right now, but I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm it's to even piece better together. that okay, way. Okay, okay. I think it's. Uh, yeah, I'm curious about that. I mean, no, there's a lot of crossover between wait, the audience. Wait, sure uh, uh, Jacob, just uh, open up a new tab. Addicted to drinking breast milk animated story. Let me see if it pops up. Mm. Nope, not that one. Uh, the the third one. Wait a minute. Hey, I'm Jarvis, and I can't live without breast milk. <laughs> Pause. It's the best. I did not make this. <laughs> but they did after you made a video about them. I made a video about, I used to make videos making fun of animated stories. And then I think one of them made this video to like, that's like a diss track to me. Digital footprint is so crazy. Yeah. Oh I mean, my to, God. To be fair, it could be a coincidence, parallel thinking at the, you know, it only has your hair beard face it, name. It, it, Shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Sure. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Forty-seven thumbs ups. If you scroll 47, down, forty-seven thousand. Sorry, forty-seven. This has three point four million views. 3. Oh 6 wow, million three thousand comments. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm the pinned comment. Is that true? Wow. Why do they do Jarvis like this? Yeah, my question is as well. I showed this to my therapist. Yeah. <laughs> is he right? I feel bad for the people who don't know about Jarvis Johnson. That you don't <laughs> wait. I didn't do this. <laughs> um, wow, that's wild. Th- anyway, this happened, and then I was I I blew this video up though because uh, it happened, and I was like, I have you know red pill, blue pill. I can choose to make content or I can choose to ignore, and I chose to make content. I dug my own grave. So then there's a lot of breast milk memes about me 
because of this video that wow. I did not make and have nothing to do with. And I don't know who made it to this day or why they made it, but. But they're welcome on the show and maybe they're set right there. And they're not. And you're what? I love to draw. <laughs> I love to draw. And I hate my friend. <laughs> and, and animated. Okay, we're getting we're Just getting my closest track. friend in the world. I was like, you know what? This could be cute. Oh my gosh. Um, really? four, five, four years old? Three years. Wow. Anyway, back to you. Um, <laughs> Breast is best, yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, this is super basic, but yeah. I actually don't know, and I uh -huh. I didn't Google it beforehand, and I should have. It's okay. Where, where does MXM Tune come from? It's actually my gamer tag. Respect, um, let's go. It was initially one of like my first usernames online. I was making cartoon drawings growing up, and I was sharing them on like Instagram, and I got like 2,000 followers, and was convinced that that was the peak of all internet True. fame that I would experience ever. And um, I just used it for like Steam. It was my like Battlefield name. It was like everything that I used I online. Get that. I guess that kind of lines up with, uh, it, in a way, like drawing to architecture, right? Yeah. So that's the, yeah. I definitely was just like a really creative kid growing up. And then I became a degenerate who loved to play <laughs> video games too much. And then uh, it just stuck with me. And <laughs> now I'm here. So that's it. Happens yeah. to all of us. That's how what it is. is cultivated in your house i mean you mentioned that maybe emotional mm -hmm. chat not so much but just general artistry and yeah I, mean, I feel like architecture is such a like an admirable field to be going in that Thank like you. a parent being like what the hell <laughs> it's like the one acceptable creative field yeah. where it's like oh you could have a career uh, what's oh, that pencil for yeah oh, oh, oh you're drawing a building Ooh, okay. straight line the straightest the line to Ooh. Ooh. graph paper <laughs> yeah if you deviate people will die <laughs> you have to do it straight i definitely was like surrounded by a lot of creative stuff like my mom my grandma was like a painter and so i from a very young age was just always doing something creative but like both my parents are teachers and i think that they were like cool the pursuit of knowledge and then when i decided not to go to college they were like hmm <laughs> you want to do music and now they're very supportive but it was just like i'm like if, I, if my child came up to me at the age of 17 was like i'm gonna sing songs be like you're crazy go I do would be something like, i have a kid yeah <laughs> what the hell real vegeta, Tr <laughs> vegeta? <laughs> where are you being literally oh <laughs> is your gosh. child named vegeta, vegeta and Goku Naruto. wow <laughs> you got it planned out yeah, respect respect uh, no last name no last name <laughs> why a, would you need it's one? a mononym but mm. it's all three of those <laughs> like names space, together no spaces <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I've that. missed you. Go <laughs> <laughs> uh, do drawing now. What, what games? What games are you playing these days? For the people, I know because um, I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> you know, because I follow you. Well, Baldur's Gate is no, like loser. huge. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm, I'm a nerd one. and a loser. And Jordan every... has never mentioned that one before, but he never. said one day he's gonna talk about it. You know what game I play? Getting laid. I <laughs> knew it. I play, I play cool the guy. game of life. Cool guy. Actually. Okay. I'm, I'm on my forty ninety. Oh my god. But I am losing. The frame rate is very. Very low. <laughs> it's been a lot of, of BG3. Yeah, and every time I log on, I literally, my computer goes, you're a fucking loser. Who's you're right? a nerd. And then I That's go, me. Yeah. You gotta change the yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. inside of your computer. <laughs> you turn it off. Yeah. It's uh, very hot. Yeah. You need Discord. Discord. I really do. Honestly, system. I probably do. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, really you think cool. Discord is the computer talking to you? <laughs> Oh, so mean. Oh my god. What is the he he, he any romance for Baldur's Gate? I thought you don't know about Baldur's Gate because you're too busy he, getting He reads late. the Wikipedia. He likes to read oh, Wikipedia okay. to make fun of it. Oh, yeah. yes. makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Shadow heart, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you are in love. Shut up. <laughs> I God, wait, who did I romance? I've played so many save files, I actually don't. I think I've maybe done most of the options. Have some honor. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> have some I have a question right. as someone who just bought Baldur's Gate but hasn't loaded yeah. it up yet because I'm too busy playing an undisclosed game that I refuse to say out loud on the podcast. <laughs> no loser. Um, but, okay, everyone who plays Baldur's Gate is, is like, I'm playing 20 saves. How how many hours does that take? That feels like it takes all of the hours. Uh, to, till the grave. Okay. <laughs> For sure. Okay, got it. I have an undisclosed amount of hours on Baldur's Gate 3. How long does, like, let's say I make one choice. Let's say I, I, I make my first playthrough and I just, like, kind of blaze through and just willy-dilly just make every, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but a basic first playthrough, how many hours is that class? I, 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 did, I did not multi-save. I, I multi-started out of curiosity. I'm like, what's an origin character? Like, what's, like, create your own? Just playing through pretty casually searching for every quest I could find. Mm -hmm. I clocked out about 150 hours. Yeah, that's that's about right. I but actually... it is 
the, the pace kind of kind of builds because the first act is maybe where I spent the most time, and it is the shortest act. It's mm. crazy. I was so lost when I first loaded that game because I didn't play any of the previous. Like I, I didn't grow up playing RuneScape or like kind of the Divinity games or anything. So it was yeah, kind of neither, dude. yeah. No, I'm sure you never touched that in your life. Um, you know, um, I played. You know what I played? I played Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Oh yeah, all right. Which is not the same type of game. No. <laughs> it <laughs> is a very different game. <laughs> but but what, that's the only reference point I have for Boulder's Gate. So every time people said Boulder's Gate, I'm like, I don't think these are the same thing. <laughs> You're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. You never played the earlier Boulder's Gates. I actually didn't, but I kind of do want to go back because I know that there's some like breadcrumbs that they put into Baldur's Gate there's a, Three. There's a couple characters like that Jahira. Are in. I gotta, oh, yeah. Wait, who's that? Oh, I didn't. And the worst that. character in the entire game, by yeah. the way. I, I don't believe people like him, this character that's late in the game. It is epic, lay random. Maybe cut it. it may, may hipster cheeses at midnight. Fucking unbearable. I, everything about Mince, I despise. I cannot believe people like that character. I like Boo. He's so cute. Oh, yeah. I like him. Yeah. I like him. Gross, dude. Like if Boo has no haters, it is a MySpace ass writer. It is <laughs> Tumblr the character nightmare. Oh my I God. tried to get him killed <laughs> it's so mean. for being annoying, <laughs> for bothering me. That's what's gonna. That's what's gonna happen to me. I'm gonna get like, I want to get the mob like called on me for just being <laughs> annoying. <laughs> it's not cringe. like I owe a loan shark money or I've like <laughs> scammed a, a casino or something. It's mm -hmm. just gonna be like you talk too much. Yeah, dude. That's six bad. shooter. I'm gonna get six shooted at a live show. That's mm -hmm. my dream. Damn. That'd be crazy. Oh Imagine that God. on a Wikipedia article. They were too annoying. <laughs> got him. The mob got him. Yeah, popular. Yeah, popular opinion is that they were so annoying <laughs> that the mob got them. <laughs> oh my God. Popular opinion. <laughs> Why do you know that? There's it a vote. It's like MTV, most annoying Ooh, person. That'd be landslide good. vote. Yeah, that's yeah. how MTV gets back into the the conversation is <laughs> killing you by killing me <laughs> for being annoying. <laughs> I become a martyr for annoying people worldwide. <laughs> uh, um, and you're also playing uh, Fortnite. I saw you doing a little dance today. Oh, yeah, I did indeed do a little dance. You did a little dance. I have been really addicted to Fortnite. And it's... <laughs> is this the little dance? This is the, the best screenshot I've ever seen. <laughs> this is the screenshot I took this morning. <laughs> <laughs> is that oh. on Instagram? Yeah. Yes. Are you? Did when you did I out? post that? <laughs> <laughs> I literally don't remember. That's so funny. I guess I was really stoned. I was really stoned and very excited to but play you Fortnite. Were, you were lucid enough to spell stoned with a zero. So it would be Instagram. I knew that I needed to find that the algorithm. I'm really good at my job, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, influencer first. Influencer oh first. God, <laughs> You're like writing so an funny. essay for school. Yeah, literally. <laughs> stoned. How, how, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like the. Uh, type of work and content you've now been making for a while has honed a little bit of internet tact a little bit of optimizing your language right it second is. twitter account you're like i'm gonna do things different yeah literally and now i'm like ten thousand tweets in it's not different at all still like i'm just saying random shit new tweets fewer slurs <laughs> oh not none not like all the same tweets with just the slur deleted oh man and i won't tell you which one <laughs> I think there is like a level of filtering maybe that like I'm just so used to at this point because I've been doing like content for so long. But I don't I don't know like if it's filtering is necessarily the right word. I think that like maybe it's just like practices like that with like the word stoned. I put like the the O is a zero. It's that type of thing where it's just like unconsciously I'm like, well, I need this to reach a level of audience so it doesn't get shadow banned. Yeah, that's true. Shadow Sh banned. Shadow banned sounds like a character in Boulder's Gate. That, it's the second act. It, like, yeah, yeah, you meet them. Mm -hmm. You travel um, to the shadow bands. <laughs> <laughs> the shadow lands or the shadow bands? The shadow bands. The um, shadow bands curse. Allison, we must defeat the shadow ban. Quickly, go save this small child. He needs to stream on Twitch. Also, if you want to have sex, everyone does in this game. But can you be a bear? Like, can I'll you be pass. a bear? <laughs> I'm busy, you know. <laughs> Resolving com a world destroying conflict. Like, but what about pussy? <laughs> like, Alp later, dude. <laughs> I gotta go, man. You gotta play Baldur's Gate three. I got to. I'm but chaste and virginal. No, none of this. Oh crazy yeah, I, I won't. I'll say no, thank you. <laughs> I'll pass. Um, I'll say uh, there's no contraceptives in this world. 
It looks like I'm I'm out. There is one romance. It kind of comes out of nowhere. It's not like a particularly established character that did make me laugh out loud. Which, which one is was? it's somebody that just goes like, I see we've uh, been, been working together for a little while now. Perhaps. Uh, you, I, you would like to ravage each other or whatever, and if you just you just say no, they just go like understood, and you get like an internal thought of like, though you do not wish to be with them, you feel a little sad about how quickly they were willing to <laughs> move on. Damn, wait, who? I'm curious who that was. Uh, well, I don't want. It's a. Give me. No, I don't know how actually uh, we could do that spoiler free. You know, we'll not talk sure. about it later. Say it with okay. your little code. Yeah, we'll say it later. Put it in song. Then people will pay attention to it. Oh, yeah. It. I'm sure people would love that. A complete album focused on Baldur's Gate 3 <laughs> I'm romances. Like, at what point does your world become songs about Fortnite and Baldur's Gate? <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. Like two seconds in. When I was playing one game of Fortnite, I was like, this is it. This mm. is it. The brain rot begins. I would do it. It is the opposite. <laughs> it is the exact opposite of Baldur's Gate. It's like, yeah, there's Other no people thinking. Yelling at you. Do you think they model you in Fortnite like Peter Griffin? You're like super buff. You've got like a, <gasps> I wish. a guitar or a ukulele. I actually did do this commercial one time for The Sims, and they juxtaposed my head on top of a really buff guy. Oh, hell yeah. I need to find a photo of this That's so that wild. way you can see it. You should just say it's real. It, it is real to we me. We have a history it's real with to the me. Sims, uh, it being that the CEO, our old boss, uh, was the voice of the the young boy in <laughs> Sims 2. Jack Conti, the CEO of Patreon, was the voice of the boy in Sims 2. I wish that was on my like resume of things. The yeah. young boy. He <laughs> then, he then you know, he's a musician. Yeah. And he then made a uh, album with the... Uh, woman who played oh, yeah. the young girl and they created an album called like we have faces too or something like that uh and it didn't go anywhere it's in wow. a presentation he gave about but, failures in his creative career <laughs> but it's but it's the young boy from the sims too i know surely I know. there's a huge fan base for the young Got boy <laughs> surely yeah okay. us what whoa whoa what? That's very convincing. Like he was like the guy too that I had to be juxtaposed on. Man, that is wild. way more convincing than I was expecting. See, they did a good job. EA's got that money, you know. So they really they 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 spent yeah. They it. called they called the Marvel people. Yeah. they said put the whole body. <laughs> so <laughs> insane. <on> <laughs> yeah, it's like this is important. It's ILM. good though. It really gave me like I I don't know. You very rarely ever get to see yourself in a different version that is so different than someone else. Like. Like, it's almost as if it is someone else. I mean, yeah. But then your head's being put on top of it. I them. know. I would, yeah. I would love to see myself in a body that isn't jacked and hot as hell. You know well, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard Tough to imagine. Tough life for you guys. Like a smaller so guy like that. Mm hmm. Like, yeah. Like a like, small hey, look, man. For the sure. guy's in shape. Let's but, just. See. Uh, he's got some work to do. I can see exactly what's not working. <laughs> my, my guns are for go, not show. All right, I can uh, <laughs> knock out punch, single strike. I wasn't allowed oh to gosh. create a clash because I would use kicks. Speaking about, <laughs> speaking on that. Um, Kicking. <laughs> so it, my guns are for uh, go and for not show. <laughs> That's insane. The uh, Twitter, Twitter video or just Twitter in general as an algorithm mm -hmm. is bad. Is like just all over the place now. Yeah. And I get the most random things. And one of the things that I keep getting on my feed now which is a welcome change from people dying sure, yeah. <laughs> and like fights <laughs> is uh, arm wrestles between like small guys who in bodybuilders. Like oh, where it's like this, yeah. this ex Marine versus this super buff bodybuilder. And it's like, what? Ooh, he's super strong. And these, this bodybuilders muscles are just for show. I, I, and I'm like, why is this on my feet? Yeah. For a demo of people being like, yeah, dude, that's my ass. But are you watching <laughs> them? Me. Now I am because, okay. well, I'm kind of obsessed with, uh, we, okay, so this is everybody mark on the Sad Boys Bingo card, talk about Twitter, <laughs> because we talk about it every <laughs> fucking episode. Uh, but uh, I, now I, I scroll, I hate scroll through the replies mm -hmm. because I love hate the fact that none of them are related to anything. And then it'll just be like, here's a... Uh, Babe Ruth in 1865 or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, awesome. <laughs> it's like uh, its own algorithm of yeah. new tweets. It's like people competing for your attention with like, they're like, uh, I found a cute dog. I don't know. Here's a guy doing a backflip. What's up, guys? I, is is you, this anything? You know what I mean? Like, turns out in humans, 
2 is still in the docket for Marvel. And then one of the replies is like, Stewie Griffin t-shirt available if he was like a Rasta guy. You can't yeah. mention Family Guy because it makes me immediately think of Fortnite now. Like, you gotta get out. I gotta bro. get out. I gotta go outside. I gotta touch some grass. I, I mean, it's a beautiful day. Is it? <laughs> Relative, I guess. It, it, it's, comparatively. Yeah, yeah it was, mm -hmm. it's was. it been like we had a little storm pass through here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a leak in my house. And uh, bad. Bad is all I'll say on that. Not good. The top of the bedroom into your mouth. Top we'll, of the bedroom we'll, we'll, into, into my mouth. A little hydration. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> to get up to be. I said wake up with this glowy <laughs> complexion. Finally, yeah. I don't have to get up to drink. <laughs> I would love to have a big hamster, like, water dispenser. No, sometimes Ooh. I think about that. I think... I think I tried to set one up when I was a kid, like on the wall of my bedroom. I was like, mm, they've got it figured out. Hamsters really have the key to life unlocked. Jail. <laughs> For being in prison. <laughs> yeah. Jail. Oh my gosh. They've got that minimalist life unlocked. They, yeah. They've got a wheel. <laughs> they've got some water. Wish I had a wheel. They got a little bit of hay. Or, or whatever the stuff you put in the... I actually don't know. Bones. Like, I had a hamster and I don't know what it was called. What was your hamster's name? Uh, its name was uh, Pashmina, which is... Uh, you, you know him? Which, which was, <laughs> Can we go way back? <laughs> which was the name of one of the hamsters on Hamtaro. Wow. Oh, okay. Shout out Hamtaro. I had a hamster that I only very like like last year realized that my mom hit me with the they went to a farm a thousand percent they did wow. they were like oh they freaking escaped i what really wanted a hamster growing up like in first grade i tried to buy one off of a friend for two dollars and it was like it was like a drug deal, but for first graders, it's bad negotiation. Yeah, yeah it was. Part. Well, no, I actually got the price down from five dollars because I said I'd pay him with a two dollar bill. Ooh, oh, that's huge. Pretty that's cool. what I'm saying. So that's I had like some great hundred dollars to yeah, a kid. Exactly. I mean, it's okay. You failed. I mean, you didn't get the hamster. I, so I did. Or did you? My teacher intercepted the money when I was putting it into his the cubby. Fucking feds. Yeah, dude. I know. What she was hell? like, she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing. Dude. I wanted my hamster really bad. I was just going to keep it under my bed and hope my parents never found oh, it. No. That was probably yeah. going to be inhumane for the hamster. So maybe it's good I for I would the... say that like when you're six, you don't have the greatest grasp on what is yeah, good I, for an animal. Keep it under my bed. No food. Yeah. No. <laughs> what, you were going <laughs> to buy the truly, food? <laughs> I don't know what I was going to do. Yeah, you were like, just like you... shell out my Lunar New Year money for like <laughs> right. hamster essentials. Hmm. I have no idea. Yeah. What's uh, what we're about to say you... Are you from California? I am from California. My mom is, is also from California, but my family is from Hong Kong. So I have... I'm a little mixed race person. Yeah. Oh yeah, that did sound like I was asking where are you really from. That's okay. I'm just, used to just, that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah for oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, we yeah. had we actually had there's a very old episode of Sad Boys with our friend Mayuko who uh where we have a where are you really from episode. <laughs> Back when we used to just talk about mental health and it uh became too intense <laughs> to do as a weekly podcast yeah, so it was like, on top I, of therapy that I was already going through. Getting back from work and then going like, well, I guess it's time to For, look inwards. Yeah. Oh, no. That's exhausting. Bad I didn't news. think about that. Like, how did you guys find the balance between like, how do you talk about stuff that is like deeper, but also like- I think like, trial and error. Just yeah. exposure yeah. therapy, yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of that, actually, uh, Logic, the rapper, started a podcast. I saw this on my Instagram feed today. He was talking to his father, uh, asking him questions that he had always wanted to know the answer to. Mm. And it was like a very emotionally raw moment. Like yeah. they were having this conversation for the first time like live. And I was like, oh, that's what an interesting display. Like I'm never going to kind of criticize someone's like the way they go about expressing their vulnerability or how they want to go, whatever. I, I was just like, oh, it's really, you don't, you don't see this a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And then the replies were all like, bro, this should have stayed private. And I'm like, no, that's how we keep ourselves yeah. like, like insulated Why? and don't express we, our feelings. Should it stay secret? It's like, like a bunch is... of people projecting. They're like, whoa, 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 feelings? Not in my rap music. <laughs> but like Logic has always been an artist, I guess, that's like pr provided that space in yeah. various ways. Yeah, like this yeah. should have stayed private. Anyway, I'm going to listen to that bop again. Yeah, exactly. The suicide Literally place. with the fucking number in the title. Like, yeah, speaking yeah. of not listening to lyrics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, yeah, I don't want to be alive. Wait, hold on. Uh, this song might be about something this else. This shit slaps, but if you don't do it to music, mm-mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, you mentioned that like not a lot of discussion at home of mental health stuff is that 
change now? That it's you've... definitely changed. I mean, I think my family, I mean, I think part of it is just like growing up in like a Chinese cultural household, like Asian people, not always the best at talking about their emotions, but I think like, obviously the conversation has progressed so much over the years that like, like my parents are more comfortable like discussing. And then also certainly when you start a career that's based off writing songs about being depressed, your parents kind of have to pay attention to it a little bit. They're um, like, wait, I read, I listened yeah, they were to like, the lyrics. They were like, oh, you're sad. Sorry. <laughs> like, it's kind of yeah. that, that vibe. I don't like, want to die. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. You're, you're, like, uh, you're like doing subliminals to your like, upbringing. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I think Hello, it's, dad. It's I, this is for you specifically. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of oh, whack when God. you did that thing <laughs> on my birthday when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good now. I like, I'm definitely, I think, that's the upside to starting a music career out of the blue is I think it helped me get a lot closer with my family because there was just like so much more stuff that they became aware of by proxy of just like listening to my songs. And then I think that was also a weird thing to like continue making music and continue being emotionally vulnerable with, but with like my family aware of it and with like right. so many other people aware of it. And how do you like navigate that? You can't Thankfully. really pull back on the authenticity once the doors yeah. open. Yeah, exactly, kind of exactly. So it's yeah. also interesting that, like, especially with old, like, sort of antiquated views on mental health, mm -hmm. a lot of it's very like solution oriented. Like, you're depressed or you're fixed. You know yep. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, if you continue making music that's emotionally vulnerable, they're like, "Wait, you're still having bad no. emotions?" <laughs> but we discussed. You're this. not repressing them like yeah, uh, what's older going generations. On? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. It's yeah. treated more like a bladder issue. Yeah. But it's like just you just drink a, like a more comfortable amount of water. Oh, you have like emotions. a mental cyst in your. <laughs> yeah. You have like a mental ulcer. So once we get that sorted, you're gonna stop having bad thoughts. You gotta Certainly. feel this mental stone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of actually sometimes a little bit what it is like. Except like they do just you're predisposed to the kidney stone that you're just against. <laughs> yeah, to get rid of. yeah. I mean, and I guess I feel like mental health discussion is a lot of the time treated like some kind of endemic skill that some people have and some people don't, as opposed mm -hmm. to just being a, a cascading behavior. Mm -hmm. Like one person, like you. you releasing a song that acknowledges it and then that resonating with someone mm -hmm. and then them using it as a kickoff point for the same discussion and then maybe they're expressing it publicly, yeah. maybe whatever. And then their younger sibling does the same thing by, uh, you know, just like osmosis. Totally. Like there are no just like, even, you know, my, my growing up my mom was, uh, she was always just like a very emotionally candid person and i was mm -hmm. just kind of in contrast a little bit more withdrawn mm -hmm. and then i got older and felt more comfortable i was just like a very emotionally uh like blocked and often like insincere kid like mm -hmm. i'm fluent in sarcasm you know like <laughs> to escape opening up or whatever and then i i went to college and actually especially moving to the u.s where there's just yeah. like a ceiling on how much people are willing to conceal their emotions for sure you just hear it it's like yeah a, there's a gas leak of emotion in every american as, no, as much as they want to hold it in it's like shaking yeah Be like i'm not doing well oh my gosh i think about that all the time like i don't know my grandparents moved from hong kong to the u.s and i think like obviously growing up there was never a space for them to talk about like anything that they were feeling and oh, then your like, parents are second generation my parents yeah my mom is second generation and um she basically I think my grandma, she went to like therapy for the first time when she was, uh, I don't even know how old she was. She was in her seventies. Well, that's awesome. Seventies. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. But like to even get to, to that open minded. Point, yeah, absolutely. Like that was really impressive. I know when she started that, I was like, damn, I never thought in my life this woman would do something like that. Prompted but, by hey. what? Just well, she was facing terminal illness. And I think that there was so much that she was like, I don't know how to talk about this with my family. And we all encouraged her to be like, you should find a space where you can talk about like what's going oh, cool. on. Cause it's such a heavy thing to, to navigate. And, um, I just like, I don't know. I think it's just as simple as like making sure you have someone that you, that's like kind of like this unbiased, uninvolved party mm -hmm. yeah. that can just listen to you. Yeah. Well, but that's like a testament to like the ever, like the fact that, you know, your grandma who, you know, is, like, I think we think of older generations as like completely calcified mm -hmm. in their beliefs mm -hmm. and to like be open-minded. I, I find that very like inspiring because yeah. some, I'm sure people think of some of these things like, ah, I'm too far gone. Yeah. Or it's like, I, I, I missed my window or I'm mm -hmm. too late. It's Old like dog new tricks. Yeah. yeah. There's, you know, no time like the present and like, it, there's always an opportunity to like 
you know, work on whatever's going on or express totally. whatever's going on. And probably yeah. some like, I think maybe some of the uh, desire to minimize other people in your space talking about it mm -hmm. is it's triggering like a gambler's fallacy of oh, I spent my whole fucking life not doing that. So if that is real, yes. then I have to feel sad about that. Exactly. I'm sure it's like terrifying. Oh, no, I... it's fake. Stop making me think about my wasted <laughs> yeah. years. No. Um which is not it's not wasted it's years, not, right? It's no. like it's it's unless it was completely debilitating for those mm -hmm. seventy years, which yeah. you know it wasn't they had a family, they grew yeah. they I wanted to say, though, we, we were talking earlier about getting comfort with, like, expressing your emotions mm -hmm. and stuff and, and how it's not, um, pe you know, people aren't just not necessarily predisposed to expressing themselves. I think my little personal theory is it comes out of, uh, you know, needing an outlet, like the, yeah. the sort of water's boiling up and it needs to, like, mm -hmm. go out somewhere and you can find productive ways for that and you can find unproductive ways and you can find like laterally productive ways where it's like not harming anyone, but it could be, you know, you could go internal. Like for me, I was very hard on myself internally and that helped, that helped me because I didn't like lash out at anyone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was like helpful that I wasn't doing like outbursts to people, but knowing that you have the capacity for that uh, or that you need to like sort of let off that steam somewhere mm -hmm. uh, is a method of expression. And that is a way that you start to get your experience in expressing these emotions and processing these emotions. Yeah. Even if it's not always in a therapy, like sort of prescribed therapist way, because, you know, we're humans. We, we have to like make do find with what we have. Things. Find yeah. another way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You theraped up. Therapied up? Am mm. I therapied up? Yeah, you therapied up. I've been therapied up for, I think it's going on, gosh, let me see, 2000. Years? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Still not fixed. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's been, uh, I think, yeah, I know, right? I like my progress bar is just not moving <laughs> forward and getting yeah. no experience you're in my feeling, therapy session. You're feeling session. very self-conscious about being immortal and sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I oh, therapy man, how years. many years have been? I think it's, it's almost been nine years or something like that. Yes. Yeah. So... Love my therapist. Shout same out person? my therapist. Um, for like the last five years, yeah, oh, I've yeah. had the same person. Yeah. Do you, okay. I talk about this a lot. I'm curious your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I like having had the same therapist for a while. Yeah. Because they have the context of like no, where you were at. That's like a exactly diary, it. Yeah. I don't. Uh, to be honest, I don't want to explain like all of the context. I don't want to do a lore drop with an entirely new with a person. Whole new person? Yeah. You're that's like, so crazy. I yeah. don't remember half the shit. Yeah, like, I don't if know, I say I remember. something to my psych and it just goes like. You fucking, you fucking said this you, in yeah. 2020. Exactly. <laughs> oh, right. Damn, it's actually amazing how therapists recall stuff for various people. I'm like, you're talking with so many people all yeah. the time. How do you remember that? I don't like to think about that? that. I like to think that we're, we're it's They're my it's bestie. It's <laughs> Nobody else yeah. talks to them. I'm helping You, you them. don't listen yeah. to anyone else's feelings. <laughs> you don't care about anybody else except for you me. You like walk in on your therapist doing a session with someone else. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Who is <Well>? this? <laughs> yeah. Dude, my psych of four years or whatever mentioned it for the first time ever. Because he changed yeah. locations and I walked in and was like, oh, nice new spot. And he's like, yeah, it's easier for people to park. And you know, some people came in. It's like, I was like fourth wall breaking. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Uh, <laughs> why do people need to park? It's just us who hang out. Yeah, what? They park and go elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. No? Hmm, you're talking to them. I have recommended money, right? a couple of people, a couple of friends of ours, I have recommended uh, him in some cases. And anytime they have taken me up on it, I'm like, good. Uh, great. Yeah. No, that. Awesome. It's totally fine. That's what I wanted to happen. <laughs> it's, it's actually good, I think. Fuck. I want you to have a space to talk about your feelings for sure. Yeah. This is why I'm not Polly. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, great that that you, hell yeah. I have to go elsewhere for a while. What's funny is my therapist was a ref recommendation from a friend of mine who is still a friend, but we don't keep in touch mm -hmm. very often, but I still have their name in the therapist, right? Because when I was doing the like dating, you know, like for finding a therapist, you're like calling around yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, I have their name next to the therapist's name in my in my phone. And that's oh, it's so like funny. Hannah Steve. Yeah, it's like Steve's therapist. recommendation. Yeah, yeah Steve's therapist, <laughs> not my therapist. <laughs> this is Steve's. They're cheating. Yeah. I love that. How'd you find yours? Man. I actually was looking in um, I grew up in the Bay Area, so I'm from Oakland and I was looking at like therapy practices because I, I the dating around with therapists is so real. And I was like, oh, I actually would like to 
find someone who is a person of color that has experience talking about like queer identity and like idea. And then I found a therapist who shares like almost virtually every identity with me, which oh, was like that's so cool, amazing. And I walked in and she's like a queer half Asian woman that's from the Bay Area, and I was like, oh. that, that feeling, <laughs> yeah, literally like, oh, that feeling though of like you, you get me, you, you're the only person that I'm talking to. We. We, we see each other <laughs> like that feeling is like amplified by 10 because I'm like nobody gets her like me and she the nobody like, nobody too. gets me like her like yeah it's totally like that. I, oh my god uh, it's mom too you guys have your own memes <laughs> oh my god I wish I respect Us. her too much to send her memes I think like I, I to be honest the people pleasingness in me it bleeds over to therapy sometimes where I'm like mm. she has to think I'm cool I, do you ever feel like you're performing for your therapist? I do stand up in my therapy yes. oh, yeah, all dude. the time I'm it like, needs to lend the right amount of time yes. it can be none I have to do Notice like a couple jokes every once jokes, in a while. Yeah. And if she laughs, I'm like, yes. Yeah. I got yeah. a gold star in my therapy session yeah, today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The number one thing keeping me down is not everybody, not all my jokes land. I <laughs> swear that probably, I probably talked about I that. I got a plus in therapy. I had all the best thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, How am I doing versus the others? Literally, you got to ask that question. Maybe I'll ask your next Tuesday. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah tell me about. What are your there? What are your patients that's really fucking shit up right now? <laughs> and tell me how much better off than they are. Yeah, <laughs> give me one of the real crazy ones. <laughs> um, I am I the best at being depressed? Uh, yeah, I want to know. I, I have the know. most unique pain. <laughs> that's that's that was real for me. Where uh, I used to think when I was like, young, I and I guess a lot of. Uh, at least young boys when they don't know how to express this and there's toxic masculinity they're like I have the most unique pain no one knows what it's like to be me it's like simple plan songs have you ever heard a simple plan song what the, the lyrics are like that they're literally there there's a literal simple plan lyric that goes no one knows what it's like to be like me oh the other one's like no to be hurt to feel lost to be left out in the dark to be kicked when you're down. It's a song called Welcome to My Life, and it's hilarious to wow. hear a 26-year-old man talk like a teenager. But <laughs> the, um, like his parents, he, like he's mad at his parents for grounding him. I'm like, you're 29 <laughs> and a millionaire. It's very was weird. It, was it recently? <laughs> yeah. No, it's like they came out. Like their songs, when they came out, they were like in their mid-20s. But uh, I was going to say, I'm jealous of you because... I don't share any identities with my mm, therapist, mm -hmm. but we will, but there's like a, there's like a solidarity. Like my therapist is an Indian woman, like a, <laughs> I used to have an Indian like therapist. Like a middle-aged yeah. Indian woman yeah. uh, who like moved, like uh, who moved from India and, um, and she's great, but I do kind of want to get a side piece therapist. <laughs> I've never heard someone put it like that. That's so funny. God, that feels fucked. Like if I if I if I said that to my psychiatrist, like I'm like I'm seeing another one as well. That does seem hurtful. Yeah, <laughs> like for I don't, sure. I'm like, what? So it doesn't go both ways? You can see multiple people. <laughs> I can't, I can't see. do it. Yeah. It's like, and they're like, oh, because they must be cheaper. I'm like, oh, way more expensive. <laughs> So, oh, I, I'm paying them way more. I'm giving them all my income. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, yeah. Sorry, oh I can't do God. multiple sessions this month because I'm giving it all to Rachel. <laughs> Who's crushing it? I'm giving yeah, it, you, you describe it sexually. I'm giving a brain job to, <laughs> to, my, side, some, to my side therapist. I'm getting, you know, oh, like, man. A brain side in the head work. Well, psychologist. That's because I, there, I, I do like my therapist a lot and they have all that context. But there are some identity things that mm -hmm. it's not like we've had issues because we have it. And then there is some stuff we can see eye to eye on. But there are some specific stuff where it's like I don't want to have to give the context of like certain cultural, certain cultural things uh, yeah. and not like cultural from a American thing because she's like been in America for most of her life. But yeah. like um, from a like black identity stuff. Yeah, totally. I mean, you mentioned the Asian household. Mm -hmm. I mean, I obviously don't know the nuances of it, but I, uh, it's probably a very nice shortcut to have someone that might have that same experience. Totally. So you have the vernacular for it. You have to go like, okay, but it's like this, but I don't, it's hard to describe a color only you've seen. Yes. Just be like, I don't, it's exactly. fucking green. I, you know, I don't exactly. know. Exactly. I mean, you can even say like, it's so silly because you could probably play, like say, say the simplest thing ever. Like I'll just like, if I don't even know how to say it, I can just be like, being Asian is so weird. And then like my therapist <laughs> will be like, 
so true and yeah. i'm like you get it and like yeah, i yeah, think yeah. You, there's instances where you could obviously say that to other therapists right. and they could be like i mean i can't uh, yeah we, we are actually <laughs> generally i tried really, and it did really? not go over well. <laughs> To your Indian okay. therapist, yeah. she was like, "Oh, okay." okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine's a white guy. He did not like it either. <laughs> Being South Asian is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why did I say that? Oh my yes god. Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> do you agree? Do you okay. agree? Shit. Yeah, but I hate I, when I yeah. do the voice. <laughs> I don't approve of that at all. <laughs> do you talk? Have you talked to your family more about that stuff as a result? Definitely. I mean, like, it is honestly so helpful to have the context of like a job where mental health is such like at the forefront of like what I oh. talk about. I think that like the conversations with my family have just opened up tenfold for them to be like it's even weird because i'll be writing songs that will apply to them and their childhood and mm. everything that they've experienced and they're like oh i didn't know you felt that way i felt that way too and so i think getting I, this is something i think about <laughs> a lot a request dm like yeah hey things have been really hard lately i just <laughs> want to say thanks for keeping me up for my, your parents exactly exactly <laughs> i think it's like it's I had a real personal connection to your son. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's I just like mom. you. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's too busy sending me cat reels on, on Instagram. Oh, um, actually, that is mom too. Yeah, yeah, she that's is mom, mom too. Yeah. She is mom too. Um, what was I saying there? Like, I think that's the main thing about a lot is just like contextually getting to know your parents as peers when you become an adult yeah. is like crazy. Yeah, that's fucked. That, that is messed it's up. They should crazy. be not let you. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, stop it. You Hold know? on. Nah. I don't want to uh, assume, but would you would you say that like just because of like not having that openness regarding mental health, mm -hmm. uh, you've kind of like growing up, do you think you've kind of brought your family along on this journey with you in a way? Oh, I dragged them by yeah, the, like yeah. the shirt. I was like, you're coming with me. <laughs> right. I, I think I remember like, I mean, my first song that blew up was literally called Feelings Are Fatal. Like, that I was 16. Hard, right? yeah, I, was shit. I was like, I that came up with that title. I was like, fuck. That could have been an emo that's track. Crazy. That could have been an emo track. It could have been. Unfortunately, it was just a little ukulele track with me hey, singing on top of it. It goes hard band. regardless. Thank you. This was uh, your one, uh, Toxic Gossip Train. It was, was another oh one. Oh my <laughs> God. That ruined my life. <laughs> I. You're not allowed to have a ukulele anymore. I literally <laughs> want to smash every ukulele in my home. It's crazy. The power that that one video has on me. Um, Her lifting the ukulele is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. It, the comic timing of it is I incredible. Know. Oh gosh. No, but you were saying um, <laughs> before we talked about Toxic Gossip Train. I can't yes. remember. Your um, first, uh, the first song that blew up. The first song that blew up. Fatal. Yes, and it was like this like throwaway song that I had written. It was all about like being closeted and being depressed. And then I played my first show in Los was Angeles. Was it a throwaway song? I'm gonna challenge you on that. Mm. Was it a throwaway song? It honestly was. Okay. Like, it was a throwaway song. Did you a throwaway like a throwaway Reddit account that's it, like, yeah, okay, yeah, I yeah. just need to get this out? Because it was yeah, like Yeah, my a... first hundred <laughs> throwaway videos that built my career. <laughs> <laughs> there was other things I was writing where I was like, this is going to blow up. And the very first song I ever wrote, which I cringe still to this day when I say it, is called 1-800-DATE-ME. Horrifying first cool. title. It truly was kind of toxic <laughs> gossip train. One eight hundred. One eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a way less like philanthropic one than like, hey everyone, yeah. this is the this is a hotline that might help you. Exactly. And then this one's like, no, no, late. The two, <laughs> the two polar opposite I of literally, hotlines. Literally the polar opposite. But I was like, I thought that like, like comedy like. songs were gonna be maybe what I would lean into. You're gonna be Garfunkel and I wanted to be so badly. I was like, mm, I could do that shit so easy. Like I can write those songs. And then I wrote a 30 second demo that turned into feelings are fatal where I was like, this is, let's try being sad for, for a change of pace. And then that was the song that ended up going like viral. Um, but uh, rats. yeah, I know. I was like, <laughs> fuck you guys, you weren't supposed to tell them. Um, yeah. Listen to my song about uh, Baldur's Gate one. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, no, I probably I was it. two degrees away from it. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, a quick God. song. Yeah. <laughs> and then I haven't yeah. played it, but totally dragged my parents into it. I think that they, they had no choice. Do you have like a big name? I know this is like such a trad interview question, but I'm just very curious. Like, <laughs> I feel like, uh, you know, music, especially when you've found your voice and the like is kind of this, you can just do that. That's like the the core of your output. But is there a part of you that wants something? Uh, well, maybe has always wanted, do you want to make buildings? <laughs> <laughs> going to go back to school and restart. Yeah. I think you know, scratch this. <laughs> this let, yes, let me now throw I this all away. A song, a building of songs. <laughs> yep, yep. I definitely yes. Like I think music was not 
I, I'm so grateful for the job I now have, but it wasn't necessarily the pathway that I wanted to pursue initially. I think it was just something that I was really lucky to to land into and I've learned to really love it. And I, I've always loved music. I grew up playing it. But I think what's satisfying to me as like a creative is to do everything. Like I love video production. I love podcasting i love video games yeah you're like a like because you i'm like I, a, at heart you know what yeah, i mean like you, no, you totally. said you started with your youtuber and youtube i did and like yeah. i love like that free stuff disposition to a disease uh, yeah like, you know, <laughs> sounds like well, you might i got youtuberitis i yeah. can't help it yeah <laughs> i create a, a law firm that's like if you've been affected by wanting to make videos <laughs> if you just can't stop you're just doing it you just can't stop doing it call 1-800 date me <laughs> oh god yeah it all comes back to that did but, you find out whether that is a lot does that go i you know? I don't think it does because it doesn't actually fill out the the full mm. phone number, which is a good thing. Because Date me. Yeah, no, it's good. There's nowhere Please. for it to go. Um, Please now. <laughs> Date me now, <laughs> or else I'll get you. Have you ever had any? And this is going somewhere. Okay. But we're gonna start with we're gonna start with a more open ended question. Favorite race. <laughs> It's going somewhere. It's going well, somewhere. No, no. It's going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Being Asian's crazy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes or no? <laughs> so, uh, have you ever had any uh, insecurities about your music? Oh my God. Have I had any insecurities about yeah. my music? Do you experience imposter syndrome? <laughs> um, Call 1 800 Dating. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I'm experiencing it. <laughs> yeah, 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 currently. We have so much in currently. <laughs> Date me. Oh my God. All the fucking time. Like, I can't even begin to know where to start with that. Like, I, because so much of it does come down to music not necessarily being the thing that I was like this is this is what I think I'm good at music was never something that I thought I was good at I just enjoyed making it and I think starting at such a young age where all of my earliest work was like I think the ukulele is something that obviously people poke fun at all the time oh my goodness I was gonna ask you about Mm -hmm. have you seen the Atlanta episode no actually uh because well there there is like the meme Of like, I think in 2010 and definitely early YouTube, Mm -hmm. so many uh, non-black creators would 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 play acoustic or ukulele covers of like hip hop Mm -hmm. songs and would go viral to the point where it Atlanta made an episode like making fun of this like trope. (laughs) It's like, cause you know, like, what if it wasn't scary? Yeah. yeah what if that yeah. song, but it's like mm-hmm. silly, like, yeah. Cause I mean, that music's fucked up. I mean, I, you know, I, I love, scary, hate it. I love Jonathan Colton, for example, but uh, he, ha- he, he, one of his songs that went really viral was a Baby Got Back cover, where it's like, <laughs> I like big butts and I cannot lie. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, and it, and it got so popular that Glee plagiarized it, plagiarized oh. his arrangement. Wow. Yeah. Wait, I didn't know it, that fact about Glee. I'm and a then, huge Glee and then, fan. And then he, and then he, so when they did Baby Got Back, it's yeah. actually, it's so Jonathan Colton's version that, uh, you know, there's a lyric in Baby Got Back where he says, um, MC Hammers in Trouble or something, Hammers in Trouble, something like that. That's and, so... and, and then, and then Jonathan Colton's version, he goes, Johnny C as in Johnny, John, John the Colton is in trouble. Glee says Johnny C is in trouble. Oh, what? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, check. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so then, and then Jonathan Colton uh, re-released the song without changing it, and then uh, said, "Baby got back in the style of Glee," <laughs> and then uh, put all the proceeds to charity. And I thought that was cute. Wow, this was like back in Glee days. Yeah, no. yeah. Johnny C- yeah, I know it's crazy. That's crazy. What happened when they wait, wait, just wait. looked up? Can the we song? pull up? Uh, can we pull up um, the Glee version? <laughs> Glee Glee version of uh, of Baby Got Back. I was so big on Glee. Me too. I was a Glee. It's a great show. I love that for you. I the, the Glee. I is did, this I, the one where Phineas th- is in the background, like Billie Eilish's Maybe. brother? Really? All right, he was in Glee. The, he who, played the gym so like, coach. So like, listen to the listen to the LA face with the Oakland booty harmony at the very beginning. LA face with the Oakland booty. Oakland mentioned. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers Pause. can. Now, uh, open up another tab. Jonathan Colton, baby, got back. LA face with the Oakland booty. Claps, the claps, dude. It's identical. Yeah, that's, that's actually wild. It's identical. That's I. Wh- he copied them. Yeah. 
I can't believe he stole that from them. Yeah, it was crazy. I remember wow. it blew up on Twitter because he was like, this came out and uh, they did not contact me about this. That's uh, another weird part. Why not even just contact I wonder if the you know comments I mean? on the Glee one mentioned Jonathan Colton at all. <laughs> it's going to be Mike's <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Wow. Mike, one, Ripping Jonathan Colton, not crediting him is not cool. Jonathan Colton get credited. Jonathan Colton, yeah. Damn, yeah, some yeah. writer dies for Jonathan Colton. Let shout out. Shout out to the writer dies. Jonathan Colton wrote this version. I want, yeah, but the 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 big the big nail in the coffin is the Johnny C's in trouble <laughs> that they left in the song. That's a wait, wild. Wait, to look up. Wait, can the you just song? play it? I want to see if Baby why is it's he also afraid? worse than the Jonathan Colton It version. is. Wait, play the... Wait, can, now, I don't think they'll say the Johnny C line because uh, it's probably not the floor. But play the Jonathan Colton song just for my... Just to just fully illustrate how bad of a rip this is. Baby God <laughs> That is criminal. Yeah. Uh, I can I just shout out yeah, the... You can pause it now. Wow. L lifetime... <sighs> Frustration. One black guy in the Glee version. I know. And they urkled him so he yeah. wasn't scary. Yeah. We can I, we have Richard Ayoade, but we're not having one of those hip hop style Obama esque oh Kendrick God. types. And I will say that, you know, John Nicholson is guilty of the sort of uh, s s sanitizing in quotes yeah. the like the like hip hop song. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't a trope as it, at that point in time as much. So mm -hmm. I'll, you know, because mm -hmm. he was doing that with a lot of stuff uh, that weren't, weren't just hip hop songs, but whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to defend him any further than I already have. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that was crazy. Oh Why did I bring God. that up though? Uh, you said there was a follow up oh, to yeah. that question. Was, oh, about, it was, I was like, talking about the acoustic stuff. thing. Oh, mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, like Jonathan Colton and other people have, yeah. you know, done that. Uh, but then like it became a big thing on YouTube. Lots of, lots of covers that were, that were like that. Um, and I don't know why I brought it up. I guess if, since you weren't familiar with that stuff, then it's kind of a moot point. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fuck this podcast. <laughs> Is there a type of music that you haven't been able to indulge in as much? Cause there's mm. an audience for what you are doing. Like genre wise in terms of like yeah. what I'm making. I don't know if that. I think that I'm really lucky that my audience feels receptive to a lot of like different kinds of music. And I think that the upside to starting with something that is like such a blank slate with just one instrument and with a, like my voice is that you can expand it to be something that's like a lot more different. So, but I think the ukulele was, it was definitely, and this is on me, but I think I pigeonholed myself in some capacities in terms of like how I was even explaining myself to other people and being oh, like, okay. I'm a sad ukulele girl and you listen to Dodie? Well, Hey, not anymore. What's up? Yeah, like kind of that vibe. But <laughs> shout out, um, Dodie. Shout out, Dodie. Love you, Dodie Clark. Um, but you weren't saying that before the show. <laughs> You'd be really mean. Shh, you were saying tell, the British are bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, that was yeah. verbatim. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> the uh, what, what was I saying? Oh, now I'm now looping. The British are bad. The British are bad. Oh yeah, the British are coming. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the sad ukulele girl pigeonholing yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I think I like really leaned into that because I think when you're young and you experience people being like, "Yeah, that's so true," you just like lean further into you're like the validation. Thing. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, "Oh, you like this? Cool." And being a people pleaser who suddenly gets a massive audience online not a recipe for actually <laughs> Preach. like Preach. doing a good job. So I think that it's like gotten easier as I've gotten older to figure out what is exciting to me to like write and make. And um, it's not baby got back covers, but I think like, uh, not, yes. you know, yeah. not yet, not yet. Do someone else's yeah. verbatim. <laughs> but I uh, so there's UMG news. Mm -hmm. Like they were negotiating with TikTok, you know. Okay, so first of all, corporate consolidation means that there's like three record la record labels yeah. uh, that are all gigantic companies and they control all of the music, mm -hmm. all of the popular music in the world. Mm -hmm. And UMG is one of the big, big ones. They own like a third of everything. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Universal Music Group, the biggest, I believe, mm -hmm. at least yeah. the broadest. It's like mm -hmm. Universal, Sony is mm -hmm. one, and mm -hmm. then what's the other one that's big? Uh, well, it's Universal. I think Sony awesome. is another one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sony the... Music and oh. EMI, Sony, Universal, and Warner. Got it. Okay, yeah. I should uh, know that. I did not know EMI at all. I don't know what EMI is either. Oof, that can't feel good for them. Mm. 
Oh, it's UMG. It's still oh, oh. Universal. Oh, huh. great. Good. <laughs> That's it's just, good. Oh, it's the British la- like wing of Universal. So it's a big, like we said, it's a big three. Yeah. Like Because the, they just keep consolidating. They do. Used to Eventually be... it'll just be one. Yeah. yeah it's funny it, to call it'll them. be the literal Universal. <laughs> 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 they they oh, knew no, when they were coming up the name, the they're universe. like, this is the plan. It's uh, just the acronym is M. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the music, music group. group. <laughs> <laughs> that feels so dark. Oh, I know. Man. So they uh, speak like... This giant corporation was in a contract dispute with TikTok, another giant corporation, or ByteDance, Mm -hmm. and they couldn't come to an agreement, and the PR people are, like, acting like they're fighting for artists, but we know they're just, like, nickel and diming and doing, like, you know, lawyer contract redlining, and Mm -hmm. it just... Didn't work out. The the executives weren't getting enough of a big cut of the artist's labor, so... Mm -hmm. And they were like, what do you mean free promotion for thousands upon thousands of artists Absolutely that benefit not. us as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. And oh, so now yeah. a third of the fucking music TikTok, like TikToks with uh, actual songs in the background are muted. So with people's entire careers have just, just been, been muted erased. on TikTok. Oh, wait, the so- archived ones as well. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think about that. It sucks. My video about being f- playing Fortnite got muted. <laughs> That was really the biggest that tragedy of that of situation. UMG. That was that was because it was kind of cringe. <laughs> yeah, so, so. That was another contract dispute they had with making bad things. Oh man, um, <laughs> that was just the, the Universal cringe group. They decided to mute a third of oh, the cringe content on TikTok. Brutal. No, no, no. UMG sounds but oh, major cringe. <laughs> major gross. That was actually the bleeding point behind the contract. They're like, we can't let people keep doing this. Yeah, we can't. this has to stop. Oh, man. I mean, that's like, uh, I don't know what you you are attached to or like uh, what your process has been with yeah. like management agencies, et cetera. But mm-hmm. that is kind of, that feels like that might be a, not this specifically, though that's part of it is like, mm-hmm. it's one of the, you know, more expensive exploitative uh, uh been exploited forever mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it's so it's so ingrained and exploit like there's old businesses that are um have like um cornered like the markets like i've heard publishing is like this where like a lot of the publishers are like hundred like hundred year old companies that mm-hmm. like kind of own everything but music is this unique combination of extremely predatory and ubiquitous and like unavoidable yeah what has your experience been with um like record labels and stuff big yeah i mean i'm really lucky i own the rights to all of my music and i think that there is situations like this with like universal where there's new models that are finally actually being made for artists to retain the rights to their songs i I work with a label called awol um and they're under the sony music group but their business model is letting every artist that they work with own their entire music catalog. So yeah, um, that's awesome. That's really sick. And it's really nice because, I mean, you would hope that like when you post on TikTok, like you would still have control over whether or not people are going to hear your songs and stuff like that. So um, I think that there's like made like light at the end of the tunnel. And obviously like the situation with UMG makes it really clear for a lot of like consumers of music and audience members to be like, oh, wait, like that's crazy that a music group can just pull the plug on promotion for every person from Taylor Swift to a really small indie artist. Like nobody is allowed to promote their music. It all will all get muted. Like that's, that's insane. Like an artist that's cannot crazy. promote their own music yeah, in a lot of these cases because really of these It's really wild. So I don't know. I think like my experience with labels, I'm glad that I own the rights to everything, but it's also like, that's such a rare situation to have happen. Is that something you've had pushback on? Like um, they've- I want that. I think, no, I mean, like, I'm really lucky. It's always been something that I've like, that's what I want to have happen. And I, thankfully there's ways to do that and ways to, to make that happen. But I mean, that's not always feasible for every person to like take that big of a gamble on yourself in that right. capacity. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a good, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. I mean, actually Fortnite, the same shit happened as we're describing with UMG, where they just oh. aren't on the Apple store still. Because they wanted to ink a deal where they didn't have to pay the thirty percent kick up to Apple. Was that what it was? That oh I yeah. I mean, no, it was for the freedom of the creator. You ever see that that nineteen eighty four like prop propaganda oh, video? Uh, it's a famous commercial. The the nineteen eighty four will not be like nineteen eighty four commercial. 
Are you talking about the the, the Mac commercial, the Apple one? Oh, uh, no, it's aping that. It is a uh, Fortnite one that they put out, which is like, oh, that oh, was cool. cool. Yeah, that was cool. I like Apple that. thinks they're in need, they're holding us back. Epic. <laughs> Epic is being a giant destroyed. corporation. Yeah, but but it, they are the, the the like. I think that Apple yeah, Apple's so ecosystem fun. is um, really predatory because you kind of have to play by their rules or mm-hmm. else, and that's not good for the consumer no and that's just why you know um big capitalism like the, these like giant corporations owning everything is not good for the consumer because when every when everything is consolidated they can start to sort of create a cartel where um you know uh they're setting the prices on everything because a couple of a cartel couple, is the perfect it's, yeah yeah is, it's yeah. like it's like how airlines you know can do this and how um the doors are allowed to fly off <laughs> and how uh you My can bad. only get one internet service like yeah. that's like yeah for you that's in your area and then that service sucks ass and but you have no choice mm-hmm. and it's a privately held company but it's like a public utility like because having yeah. internet is is a public utility it's not like a it's not a thing that you can go without in this world at, in, at this point yeah if you like are professional or like you work they was stuck in an extended uh because i i still have uh i'm still on the lease for my apartment in the uk and i sublease it mm. unless that's not allowed <laughs> in which case i'm kidding uh that but I, I subleased that apartment and there is a uh in the uk you pay for a tv license i think it might be yearly it might just be actually i think it's just you just pay it for each location and then you have it the whole time you I think. Got it. And supposedly that's to subsidize the BBC primarily and that's mm. just kind of become a cultural standard. And it's, you know, it's not nothing. It's like a hundred bucks or something like that or like equivalent of a hundred bucks. And I, we kept pushing back on it because we're like, well, we own a TV, but I have not watched terrestrial yeah. TV since like the Obama administration. I am not yeah. paying for this. It's crazy. And we started getting really petty about it and we were getting these like, we will destroy your credit. <laughs> you know, like we will send. At one point, they 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 send one where, uh, because it got sent to my mum's place that I was uh that I had for her, and we got sent a, not a cease and desist, but equivalent of like we will send the marshals, like we will we will send you know, officials will visit your home if we don't receive a reply about this notice. Jeez. And I'm like, and do what? Yeah. What. <laughs> what are they go gonna up, do? Go up to my sickly mother and just be like, "Hey, what the heck? Have you been watching Downton?" There's, Can't do that. <laughs> there's so many things as consumers we are forced to put up with because mm-hmm. uh, companies are trying to like squeeze us for our last dollar. Mm-hmm. The fact that you can buy uh, a, an expensive television and plug it in and you get ads on your television yeah. that you cannot crazy. turn off. Insane to me. It's, it's a insane. box that's supposed to show me pictures. For real. <laughs> Don't fucking, why am I getting ads? I bought this. Yeah, like, <laughs> what is I, going I'm on? I'm renting the TV from <laughs> Samsung. Why am I looking at ads? Well, this happened with that Suicide Squad game, right? It's like DRM online only is like, I but if the servers go down, I just don't own it anymore. That's so I just insane. can't play the game I bought. Oh, yeah. And now, you know, every streaming service is like, oh, I can write this off of my taxes if it doesn't perform well. So I'm just going to take it down forever. And so and then DVD that. sales are really no longer a thing. Do you get like disproportional kind of merch and album sales because of the maybe the connection people have to you? I don't like the term parasocially so much when it's just liking something a lot. Mm. But the connection, I guess, to like the. I don't know. Like you as a personality. Yeah. Do I get like when you say disproportionately? Yeah. You just mean like, like more like than more than you generally would get. Like Spotify streams is kind of the default. I feel like for a lot of um, not YouTube music listening, mm. but I feel like your audience would be more predisposed to like I'm buying this album. Like this is I'm a part oh, of this kind of thing. Oh, I see. Like so, so um, the you're saying like f- physical physical music sales. Do you? Do or, you sell your music physically? I do. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. yeah. Any vinyls? Yes, vinyl. It's like it's such a a hard thing to make vinyl though. Oh, yeah, because yeah, you have to carve them yourself. Yeah, every single day I wake up and I sit <laughs> there with a little, little thingy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm whittling. <laughs> you start whittling yeah, away. It starts with vinyl. marble. I just know that thing would sound like shit. Um, <laughs> 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 it's like limited run, a one, one <laughs> time. <laughs> 
It is cool. One on one vinyl, handmade. Ooh, That's turn a up your bass cool on idea. this. <laughs> <laughs> like breaks your record machine. There's oh three seconds God. in the middle where it sounds perfect. It sounds exactly like this. I finally, one. after yeah. like all of the loops, figured out how to yeah. do it. And it's just the very tail end. The Not monkeys that write Hamlet, yeah. they eventually <laughs> create a vinyl. Oh my gosh. I don't reckon those monkeys would be able to do that. Mm. Creative they can't yeah. write or whatever. No, that's true. It's always like, if there's infinite monkeys, they write Shakespeare. No. no. I've never done it, and I can freaking read. <laughs> and I know him. Uh, all right, this is the part of the show where we look at stuff from the internet and talk about it. <laughs> um, because people don't like to click on things about emotional vulnerability, so we have structured the show in a way that we can do both. So... Here's where the thing that you probably clicked on the thumbnail for the video for is going to happen. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha, ass. Let's talk about Apple Vision Pro, everybody. We've all seen the memes. Apple created a $3,500 headset <laughs> for so augmented wild. reality. He's those cheeky <laughs> bastards. <laughs> and it's like, it's like Google Glass all over again. Jacob, let me, let me send you something. Oh, I think I know. What is it? This takes me back. This wasn't my wow. Google Glass, but I did have friends with Google Glass. This was taken on the Google campus when I was in, uh, when I was interning there. First, that's wild. First thought comes to mind. Cool. Really cool. Well, you mm -hmm. look. You sorry, but your cool factor is just not ever gonna reach what it was when you were in Google Glass. <laughs> yeah. You look pissed off. I think you you give me the like. I know you felt dope as hell when you were wearing. Oh those. yeah, for sure. I've got like a sweatshirt draped over my. <laughs> yeah, you my play back. polo. <laughs> yeah. There's a different. I don't know if I've told the story about showing Google Glass to Robin Thicke. Yes, I think I have so. showed it. <laughs> yeah, there's a photo where a, like I, it's it's not better that I didn't personally own Google Glass, but I had multiple friends who did, but it is the truth. <laughs> um, but yeah, where like I went to this bar in Atlanta and uh, and Robin Thicke was in the back and we showed him Google Glass and he asked if he could see through women's clothes with it. Uh, and we said, this is why you're getting a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, hey, would this help me win a trial? Yeah, right? Uh, oh my no, God. No, it was, it was super weird. Then he got super drunk, bought us all shots, and then got uh, taken away in a white Escalade by his manager because he tried to hang from the ceiling. I don't know if I told that part. Oh. Haven't seen him what? since. What? He got super drunk at this bar in Atlanta. And then you know how like some bars have like oh, exposed yes. piping and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like stood on a table, balanced a little plate, ceramic plate uh, from the bar on his head, <laughs> fell, broke on the table. And then he tried to he tried to grab up to the like exposed piping and stuff and grab onto it. And then his manager was like, we have to go. That's crazy. That's crazy. It wild. It's um a little. It says a lot when you have to take your representation out with you, mm -hmm. like a chaperone. Yeah, it says yeah, he was performing next door at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, <laughs> so I guess it was just like I don't know if it was before the show or after the show. Hopefully after. <laughs> Hopefully after. <laughs> um, but that's what Apple Vision Pro reminds me of the glory days. Robin Thicke. Um, How much but also, so we were talking a little bit about rage bait, uh, in something that might be on Sad Boys Nights, but. This feels, I don't know where we start, Jacob. Should we start with the Casey Neistat video? Uh, yeah, so you'll notice he is traveling in public traffic with this headset and this on. is... Oh my gosh. gosh. I don't feel like the legislation has caught up to this one. No, no. The legislation hasn't caught up to anything. <laughs> I, mean, to, I mean, to be fair, the person with the camera is in the middle of the road. Yeah, I mean, what the you're, fuck? Oh, wow, I hate that. Sorry, what? What? The oh, so I hate is, that. This is what it looks like when you FaceTime from Vision Pro because it's got a camera inside. Oh, of course. So it's looking at your face and doing like a representation of it, but it doesn't have the rest of your body. So it just... So it creates this like fuzzy ghost-like version of you. That looks so much worse than you on that jacked body. I <laughs> yeah. know. They, it should just they be you on the technology. jacked body for everyone. Do you think that avatar. they let you choose what your body is every single... Like, do you, do you get a choice? Yeah, you get a I want a white guy's No body. one else gets a choice, but you get a choice. Experience white privilege through yeah. Apple Vision oh, Pro. Man, that that would be, no, hold on. Now I'm buying. Tim no. Cook, sign me up. Sold. Yeah. Eyes are close. You're too, it's too much teeth. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Um, I want to make a review. Come help me. All right. Sounds oh. good. Oh, oh whoa. All right. All right. If you want like a normal review of this thing, I can't recommend enough to go watch to go watch Marquez Brownlee's. His is fantastic. Shout out Marquez Brownlee. Shout I have been Marquez watching Brownlee. his videos about this, but he is 
a tech reviewer who's giving a very straight ahead capability yeah, based about thing and in, in like traffic he's, free. <laughs> yeah, he's in his studio talking about it. He's doing his job. I've, it, they're enjoyable videos and it's interesting. Um, but he's so funny because uh, he knows he's like a great imp- improv actor, right? Because a great improv actor is going to set up his scene partner to like sure, yeah. to, to, for a good joke. So Marquez posted that, like what the ghost looks like. And Marquez's post is like, just so you know, this is what it looks like. End of post. <laughs> and he knows what people, like, I'm like, he knows the internet. He knows what people are going to do with that. But he's oh like, let me gosh. provide you the thing to quote tweet. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a doctor and you're walking in, you're a hypochondriac. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, this is a different, like, I kind of have a different take on this and different questions. And that's what this is. But Marquez is really good. What is this thing that I'm holding? You get, get, don't get out of the road, man. Literally. Carrying a TV. <laughs> just holding up as you walk around. You can't look at an iPad while you walk in the uh, road. Yeah. People get mad at you. I like get a neck mount for like <laughs> <laughs> my iPhone. Oh my God. What are those like they used to, I used to actually have a baseball cap where you could suspend an iPhone. It was like, it had like a really long bill and like you could put an iPhone at the very end Does of it. it well, and, I mean, was it doing like, this? It. Like a, like a, uh, what are they called? Anglerfish? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. It's like a reverse uh, gimbal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of is an anglerfish except what you're trying to catch is someone mugging you. You. <laughs> uh, a thief. That sounds like something you get for like a dad for like Father's Day. Oh, it was yeah. my dad's. And oh, I okay. took it from Hell him. yeah! It's like the two equivalent of like two yeah, beer yeah, cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's got everything: two beer cans, the little watcher on the front, a pair of aviators behind it. <laughs> it's got a, a tie. Co- it's own cooling system. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes, <it's> a, <laughs> you turned to Bane with a beer. <laughs> Thanks for the present. <laughs> Merry Christmas. This is the future of society. <laughs> I can see so clearly now. I got, I died on my boost board. <laughs> this is the best way to watch Tenet. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't understand anything they're saying. It's quite dark. <laughs> what is the deal? I mean, is it, is it artificially darkening the surroundings? Because that it looks I like day for night. I think it you know? is. I, I want to say that that's it does. Happening, yeah. yeah. Was he really smoking <laughs> drunk and like... How do you find it? I had it for like an hour. Yeah, okay. Casey's had it for an hour and he's walking and boosted boarding down the busy streets of New York City. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. That's insane. It, there's something so elegant about the fact that he's like, he's on, he's doing... Uh, new, like, non-consumer available, or, like, accessible tech. Mm-hmm. On a boost board, which was at one point also so there. Crazy. Oh, and now boost board, the company like went under, and so you can't get them anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my god. Casey bought all of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get a random pile of bricks, an old toilet. I found the restroom. And a bunch of random wooden poles. There's more poles. Dude, I've always wanted to watch a Mr. Beast video while I wait for the train, but I've never been able to do it before because I, I didn't have the technology. Oh, thank I God they evolved. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to. I, yeah, wait. What is the audio situation? Is it like. It's like it's bone playing, conductive, yeah. I think, or just, whatever. It Because, it, yeah, I mean, the it Oculus is like. So can people kind of hear it, though? Like, if you're sitting next to someone, so they can be like. It's Mr. Beast, and today can I'm doing like. Can you imagine somebody just listening to a Mr. Beast video loudly and they can't next to even, you on the subway? Yeah. I mean. Uh, What's up, guys? I actually can't imagine that. It's happened multiple times. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> I mean, there's like a, a, to be fair, if he was on um one of those extremely elegantly quiet Tokyo subways. Then you could hear them, and yes. it's like a big faux pas. I can tell you, on a London or a New York in subway. In New York, people are watching One Piece out loud <laughs> at full volume. I'm amazed he can hear it if yeah, he's on the subway. Yeah, for real. Well, later in this video, we're going to a hundred... <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> pause. This is like the that meme. They don't know I'm watching this for me <laughs> at the party. Oh yeah, the my god. <laughs> They don't know I spent thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, they Dude. don't know I'm looking at the uh, someone has one billion tweet. dollar yacht yeah, versus literally. one million dollar yacht. Island. But first, we're gonna head over. To- <laughs> 
I'm imagining getting arrested while they like you're wearing this, and oh, you're like, hold on, I gotta wait, pause wait, wait, I have one, I have one more minute. Please, please, please. Trying to remove them. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get pull the cop away. <laughs> it works. You kill them with the app menu. Oh yeah, it's augmented. You're like, I'm holding a virtual gun. <laughs> they've got to wear the VR headset so, that, or the, they've got to wear the headset so that they can see your VR <laughs> yeah. weaponry. People, you're using the Beat Saber to kill them. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I guess, uh, I mean, the the refresh rate just has to be amazing, right? Like, if you're walking around. I, I've heard the display is really good. I've heard the display is, like, oh, really I impressive. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just in terms of, like, um, it is $3,500 one. And so no <laughs> no one, so it better be, but the uh, they haven't, like, no one's put this many, like, high quality, like, instruments into a thing that you strapped to yeah. your base before. If you contrast this against LASIK, this is more expensive than eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is, like, hard That's really dark. Eyes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's a Black Mirror episode, but, like, yeah. what isn't these days? Are you, a, are you a, a, a VRsman? I do have an Oculus, and I only play Beat Saber on Damn it. Um, but I, it, because I'm blind... I can't really like fully immerse myself in the virtual reality thing. Like, how does that factor? Yeah. In? So, so they have, um, uh, you can put in your prescription <laughs> and, then, and it, it adjusts and they give you a, an insert that like is your prescription for it. Wow. Does it work when you have an astigmatism? Uh, I think so. <laughs> and it, it, it's with, can, um, but they won't. It's like, <laughs> is it oh Zeiss God. glass? Like it's like really high quality Whoa. glass. That is Genius. Yeah. yeah. Presumably for a premium, probably. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. another 30, like 600. Yeah. It's like crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's expensive. It's Ray Ban. Yeah. <laughs> something happened today that was completely unexpected. And that something I don't think anyone else has really touched on. None of the reviews I've seen or read, none of them really uh, uh, put to words what I experienced. With all due respect, that's because it just came out. <laughs> yeah. And we don't have Literally. like enough t lived experience. Like, sorry, I don't want to spend $3,000 <laughs> on yeah. Apple Vision Pro immediately. Plus an installed LASIK. Yeah, I literally. <laughs> The entry for the barrier for entry is so incredibly yeah. high for one of these yeah. things. I mean, is the what's the battery life needs to be incredible? Right? It's it's you, it has that like cord carries, to connect it to like an external yeah. battery because the battery is not good. Really? So like everyone has the uh, cord hanging. Casey oh, had yeah. it, and then has like a, oh, and there's a battery pack too that comes with it. I oh. think. Wow. Yeah, I don't think it even turns on without the battery pack. Oh uh, yeah, because a lot of them have a battery pack on the back strap yeah mm. that's right it has like a proprietary like magsafe type connector mm. Mm. like a circular little magsafe thing and then it connects to this battery there pack. is something and that is go in your pocket. that yep. is so dystopian it has think a... about like magsafe on person now Installing. like you have to yeah, that's it's crazy the matrix. Yeah. like you're literally like jacking in Ugh. it literally is the only reason it's not like that ox cord that they put in the back of their head in the <laughs> matrix is because they can't. Yeah. It has nothing yeah. to do with like the ethics or the logic. It is it's just... Like this is, between this and Neuralink or whatever. Yeah. After a couple of hours of running around the streets of New York, as in not in a controlled environment, my brain sort of clicked and it just forgot that I was looking through cameras and screens. Part of this, I would guess, is because Casey Neistat is already used to New Yorkers looking at him yes <laughs> yes because he is a well-known new yorker yeah. Yeah. It, the number of people being annoyed by my boosted board didn't change it at didn't all. change at all it's still yeah. everyone <laughs> I, I fist i fist bump just as many people as normal in fact maybe more <laughs> oh my god i still interrupted a bunch of people's vacation <laughs> and that is where this this that's where the that profound moment came from and what occurred to me as I was sitting there in Times Square on a bench. <laughs> I can't. Oh, I always fell into the camera. It's so Dude, Ooh. how Ooh. embarrassing. <laughs> this, it, oh my God. If it wasn't the, it's, you know what it is? It's the slack jawed like, 
Why? <laughs> Psycho. Whoa. Wow. The Black Mirror version of this is unchanged except for he's also drooling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, it's, I was just thinking with all those battery packs attached, can I please have like a hazmat oh, layer God. between me and the battery <laughs> going into my neural stem, please? Yeah. Can we, Yeah. Hang on. Got to turn on my eyes. <laughs> Zoom. Just like. THX sound, please. Just radiating the back of your head for yeah. six hours a day. Oh, my God. Strangers all around me. The real world moving all around me. <laughs> but I have like is he describing reality? Yeah, there's a bunch of people looking at you, dog. It's like strangers were walking around me. It was like a really high definition video game. <laughs> yeah. The graphics on these models. It honestly sounds like that exactly what we talked about, Casey Neistat having just as many of these people staring at him as normal. Yeah. He's like, actually like, people looked at me. Like, oh. and then he like clues into it for the very first time. It's but just because like, he just has a focus has function focus that function pulls their face really yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Annoyed person detected. <laughs> Cringe. Oh Dude, this would be great gosh. for if you're naturally, I'm naturally an eye contact avoider. Mm. So this, I could like look at yeah. people in the eyes and they would and have knock, no idea. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have that setting on where your eyes are visible at the front. <laughs> Giant. Like eyes. Ew. <laughs> on the front of it. Hate that. That's, a, that's part of it, right? You can have the, it, obviously not always because his bathroom wasn't doing that, but you can have your eyes represented on the front of the screen. Oh, can you actually? I don't know. I mean, maybe I've seen something like that. Yeah. It's, Presumably, it's whatever's recording yeah. the camera yeah, in there yeah. right now. That's crazy. But they, I, they must be bigger, right? That'd be so funny. If you had little um, Battle Angel Lolita eyes. And over here, I had my Apple TV and then all of my apps. And they're floating in Times Square in the middle of New York City. They're floating there, and I'm actually there. And there's actual humans around me. And in that moment... <laughs> Isn't that just watching Mr. Like, Beast video on an iPhone? <laughs> Dude, I... <laughs> Like it's, he's just on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the this is like half the mushroom trips I've ever had. If you're with someone, oh they're like, God. we're both here. We're here. But you're there, <laughs> but also here. Why do they have both words? It's it's like if um we didn't have iPhones and then you showed someone. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it was like, I had the power of a computer <laughs> Give a hand. small Victorian child Apple yeah. Vision Pro and see what happens. Oh no, He'll, he explodes. <laughs> he explodes. He's what, inside the headset, he's watching that video of the train approaching the screen. <laughs> he's yeah. like running. He's, honestly, a small Victorian child would be the target audience for a Mr. Beast video. <laughs> Dude, they couldn't wear it, weigh their head down. Yeah. <laughs> we exploded a big train. I'm in. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm in. This is it. This is the future of computing that everyone's been promising for like the last 15 years. This is something that like, let me like truly peek into where we're at, where all of this is going. As a person involved with technology for the majority of my life and career, this has been said so many times about so many products. And I could just list off a few of the things that this has been said about uh, that have failed. Um, one was the su f future of social networking was going to be Google Plus. Mm. <laughs> I Wait, what happened? I remember using Google Plus and posting, this is like Facebook, but better. I posted that like when I was in Very high reminiscent of something called Threads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mark my word. And then, yeah, Google, Google Glass. It's like, mm -hmm. I still think this, I still think VR are ahead of their time because the hardware is one, prohibitively expensive. Two, prohibitively large. And like, I just can't imagine that like the, like people are going to, if anything, this is going to create, if this catches on, it creates a two class system, yeah. right? And like, no, which we already have, by the way. We are like but. evolutionarily developed to, to be tactile, like feeling a, con you could make a uh, uh, hand gestures, say like uh, play on the PS5. You can make hand gestures an implemented part of the program it could be seamless. It would, it would work perfectly. And people would default to controller, not just for price reasons, mm -hmm. but also it's frustrating because we, we like feedback. We, that's why we have a sense of touch. Well, it's like the motion sickness thing that happens with VR. Your yeah. brain is just not conditioned. Yeah, I wonder what that's going to be like that. with this. Uh, yeah, I guess like I, if the frame rate and the whatever yeah. is good enough. It's kind of like, you know, if you have if you play like an FPS and you have a crosshair in the center, it helps some people with yes, that. Yes, to like center yeah. your graph. Yeah. I think. It's the app store. <laughs> so, <laughs> as someone who did that, I did that week in the metaverse video yeah. when I did get motion sick, like yeah. very early on. 
Um, I do think this would be better because it is your brain can like you have like the spatial reality is still like roughly one to one or at least um, comparable to the real life spatial things. Mm -hmm. We're, We're in VR. You don't have any of that. And you're running at like some sort of lower frame rate yeah. and yeah. you're in like ps2 graphics or whatever <laughs> i uh, cannot wait to see how they implement like logic pro x into this thing and it being the most clump like a nightmare like trying to keep track of the timeline yeah while you move there's your no head. way I, like, there's no you're, way you're like watching someone and they're just like, <laughs> like, 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 it looks like the you get like an ar like, drum kit or something yeah, oh, that'd dude. be insane Oh, that's the thing, right? Every single time that they would even demo early iPhones, early touchscreens, they would be like, you can learn to play the piano. Right. And it's like, well, no, it's, but well, only if I'm staring directly at it <laughs> at all times. Because yeah. your, your fingers need to feel like the grooves and the separation between the keys mm-hmm. and it, it's going to get different sizes as mm-hmm. you like move your head around. I just, it's okay to, for things to not be everything. Yeah, I'm a, technology optimist even though i'm like very cynical and critical of like the powers that be in the technology space especially now but i think things like this just move i think they're all they're glorified research project projects Mm -hmm. like that's how i felt about google glass it's like okay cool we put a, a an android phone next to your eye so you had a little heads up display and this is like Honestly, just seems like a fancier version of that. I'm ready to be proven wrong, but... I mean, the glasses element is more... I mean, anything lighter is always going to be appealing, but there's something about that because A, it's less noticeable, and B, it is a two-second disengagement. Yeah, exactly. And even that had people get, like, randomly attacked and uh, denied entry from a lot of establishments. So this is going to... Frame one, it's going to be like that, I'm sure. Oh, Mm -hmm. dude, wearing, like two to three months of rent on your face and just Insane. be like, anyone like to Can grab it? Rob me, rob me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you have a, when you're like producing, do you feel like you are sometimes hesitant to like the it tech or like a new piece of hardware or like? I mean, I'm honestly just, I, I'm just such a creature of habit. It's like I, when they took away all the ports on a laptop, I was like, oh, I don't know, what do I do? <laughs> like, Everyone was like that yeah. in your defense. And then and I mean, even Apple back. brings it back. It's like, yeah. I think they were so, like, oh, we went too far. Yes. So even stuff with like this, I'm just like, this is like a very early installment of something that they wow. will have to continuously work on and streamline if this is going to be something that's applied at all. But like, I don't know, with music, like, I barely know how to turn on a metronome in Logic Pro. <laughs> that's, I can't, I don't know how to do that. So like learning mm, how to cave, natively interact so. with something new sounds so intimidating. Press K. Yeah. So. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, Someone needs the, to be in this position. Now. Now. I yeah. write a lot of songs where I apologize with <laughs> like cute instruments. <laughs> <laughs> I play and I like uh, have one of those like single snares and I just play and I go like, Oopsie Daisy, love I've hit a kid with my car. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta apologize for that. My Actually. bad, psych. <laughs> <laughs> um, toxic gossip trains complaining about me <laughs> <laughs> driving into that parade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at the. So, going back to the posts about Vision Pro, I'm gonna call bait on most of these for sure. Let's, but let's 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 poke into some. Yeah, I hate this world we now have to live in where we have Gaze, to screen or not. it. Yeah. Because some people are just weird. They are really weird. Like, people well, will okay. do barefoot bullshit. Oh, my God. I'm a legend. Crime, no? There's a few things here that's wrong. Not the sad piano music. Like... Well, that's definitely a crime. Put your pants on the wheel. <laughs> what? He's watching Mr. Beast. Yeah, it's the exact size and shape. Of... He got pulled <gasps> over. This date of Dude. death. What? What are the? <laughs> oh wait, wait so Ooh, cap. Yeah, I, um... I think they just pulled up to like some cop cars. And they <laughs> just seen like, a cop. Like, uh-huh. I don't like. Uh, whenever I see stuff like this, I'm like, no black person ever in a million years <laughs> no, would no. Would, mm-hmm. would tempt that. Would... I do think that there's some like, I one uh the. Tesla auto drive stuff does what I thought was eye tracking. I don't know what it does exactly, but it does like make you like keep your eye on the road. And I don't know how it detects that. So, 
Um, and then, and then I think that, oh yeah, the vision pro stuff doesn't work when you're moving, but I guess if you're in a car, it doesn't detect that you're moving, Mm. but I feel like it's only a matter of time because, uh, if Pokemon go can detect that you're in a car, then the vision pro will be able to do that. But I, I also just think it's, that's just for the bait though. I mean, the thing is, is like bait or no bait, unethical product thing to make. Yep. Uh, Like it's just but you're dry, it's your life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, I get it if you are walking through Times Square and you're getting in people's way or whatever, or you're even like maybe being a little hazardous, but when, it'd be like if uh, Casey took his boosted board onto the freeway and was like, oh, where my Apple Pro, I'll make it so the Mr. Beast video is the exact shape and proportion of my windscreen. Oh, it's interesting. Like it, It's like, I can't imagine being that type to like not fear for your life at all. Like um, be embarrassed. It is or, like very much like white man moment. Yeah, like, shameless. Ju- yeah, that's very cool. Um, wait, not a phone inside. Not a phone inside. <laughs> Are they complaining or saying that's better? Yeah, they're saying, "Hey, we got we put our phones oh, down." Man. Hey, can you? Why are you watching this concert through your phone? Be there in the moment. And instead, they're just wearing you know the, ski goggles. That's cool. No. The, the Dyson the air purifier Dyson that like headphone doesn't air purifier. Oh, is that what that? Is? That's what yeah. that is. Yeah, I, I remember seeing a big thread about how this is a a very bad device. This Dyson air purifier thing. It's only a matter of time until Apple Vision Pro has some sort of thing where it's like it's like the TV situation yeah, where you just, just get ads fed ads. Out. Like that's gonna oh, be like billboards inevitable. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those old PC viruses where like a dancing woman would come up from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it's so Blade Runner. Me, big boy Trojan <laughs> bonsai oh buddy. It's like the purple monkey is just like <laughs> playing around a little clippy um the cyber truck one is funny can we look at that one this one's funny to me because in order to do this bit you have to own the cyber truck oh my lord that is, dude it is caters to such a specific group of people dude it's it's <laughs> so, I, I get that there's some value or like like people some people feel like externally they're impressive like some people are like that's yeah. right a cyber truck but for me doing this is the equivalent of like walking into a starbucks and shitting yourself and being like <laughs> pretty cool huh huh guys <laughs> yeah Imp- jealous yeah. it's it's <laughs> like they're making a joke wow. i'm almost certain but they don't know what joke they're making yeah, yeah. wouldn't it be weird if i did something <laughs> because i think here again they are um they are filming this for the brief window of time before the Tesla beeps at you to keep your hands on the wheel. Oh, mm. yeah. Um, which is why in that other one, they uh, they had their hand on the wheel. <laughs> it's got to get his little w- weird eyes at the front. Yeah. When do people do that? I feel like normally, wow. I never seem to see it in any of these videos, the little eyes projected on the front. I, I, I guess maybe I wouldn't A lot of this to. stuff is, doesn't show up well on camera, so I'm it's not sure. Like, if you're actually looking at something like a v- virtual screen in the headset, it'll just show this like blued version of it. Oh. And so the eyes will only show if you're actually looking at just your surroundings. Oh. oh but it is semi-visible. It's so shame, freaky. though. Like, what, what's, what's the shame? You know what I mean? I think that, yeah. I'm embarrassed if I had like my laptop See, out. that's not the thing. I think it just appeals to people who are shameless. shameless. The dream. Yeah, I. On all these people are white. Whoa, geez, so's um fucking you know the guy um, Jacob. That's we don't doing. see color here on Sad Boys. Uh, <laughs> I figured. Race. I got that vibe. <laughs> I don't see color, but I am racist. <laughs> We're colorblind here. <laughs> Caught him again in, at Washington Square Park. Well, don't do that. Don't keep filming this man. I followed him all day. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, guys? I stalked a guy living his life. Yeah, 24 hours in another man's <laughs> life. Day, day in the life of this guy that I found on the subway. <laughs> What's going on, guys? I would describe the smell of his hair as kind of chestnutty and nutmeggy. He stopped to get lunch <laughs> at a sandwich. I followed him in. I had a hoagie roll. It was pretty good. I Here he him. is, by the way, from across the hall. Can't see me because he was watching uh, 100 Boys and 100 Girls <laughs> in a Circle by Mr. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've gotten to the dark side of technology and social media, I think that's a good place to leave it. We've all uh, impregnated ourselves with a uh, with a feeling of what? dark disdain. Speak and- for yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the pill. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Adderall. I don't feel. I don't feel sadness or, or uh, dread. Uh, are you feeling? Uh- <laughs> 
pregnant with and dealing, <laughs> dealing. Okay, that word can be used <laughs> to think other than human pregnancy. Oh, oh my gosh. I forgot about that. Like a pregnant pause. That's not about when you get pregnant and have to wait. <laughs> That's when you're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's so fun to talk about the dystopic state of our world and technology. Yeah. Just really uplifting stuff for me to chew on for the rest of the day. And yeah. So we were thinking maybe you could like write a song about it. Oh, and yeah, us. yeah. Yeah. Maybe a song about us. Yeah. Oh, you know what? That's crazy because I actually made like a whole album based off of you guys specifically. Go ahead. Um, I'm sure that'll come out soon and people will love it. Yeah, people yeah. will love it. Go ahead. Sing it. Bring up the ukulele. Jar Jarvis and Johnson, the toxic Jarvis and Johnson. Jarvis and Johnson. Train. <laughs> Jarvis and Johnson is my law firm. Jarvis and Johnson. Sorry. Oh my god. It's all those J's. Jordan Jarvis. Jordan. Blah blah blah. Yeah, the law firm's called My Jarvis, Jarvis, Dad. and Little MXM Jordan. MXM Tune, thank you so much for joining us today. Genuinely, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah. well, you're always welcome back. Uh, thank God. But you do need to <laughs> bring a gift next time. I will. It's God. like a, give you like a, I don't know, nice watch, nice. Vision Pro. Y yes, actually. Yeah. I bought the entire stock, so yes. I'll bring it to you guys next time. What about time. A one really you big watch? Yeah, yeah, I did. What about a watch that we can wear together, like a broad enough strap? It's a handcuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. a single cuff. Okay. Yeah, what if you put handcuffs on us and send us to jail? <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on it. That's all the content for right here, right now, but we will be heading over to our exclusive Patreon-only podcast, Sad Boys Nights, where uh, we're going to watch those people on TikTok who are walking around barefoot and cut the bottom <laughs> of their shoes out of their feet. And there she is. It's me, everyone. <laughs> I am a on. white woman from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Maya will be there too. <laughs> Maya, Very thank you for joining us. We end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. We, we love, love you. you. And we're sorry. Boom. <laughs> a lot of people are worried about how dirty our feet are getting and if we're going to catch diseases from doing this. Through no, the puddle is the water. You are, you Through are. the puddle? You nasty. We take sanitation of our feet very seriously. Is she I'm opening the door with her that. foot? Wait. We take sanitation of our feet very no, seriously. No, that's very and one funny. Thing that we Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving girl? Moving girl, how's your day looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, are you wanting? Guys are rich for me.